Uh, we knew the Democrats were going to buckle on the Iraq war funding, so we're not that surprised by it. And, you know, I was a little uh, pissed about it earlier, uh, but it got beyond it. The telecom immunity, we got a sense they were going to buckle, but for a little while they fought and they uh, made the mistake of giving us some hope that they had any kind of balls at all. And they gave Bush exactly what they wanted on telecom immunity anyway. They just did it. They just gave it to him. But set to pass today in the Senate, and it'll pass in the House. And they had won the fight. They had already won it. They already took the political hits. They already got the ads, and they had stood their ground. But no, you can't have it. Democrats cannot go, you know, a couple of months without capitulating on something, right? So the victory that they had, they're about to sh flush it down the toilet and say, oh, yeah, telecom immunity, yeah, go ahead, have it, who cares? All the laws you broke, you're free to go. Well, I'm not the only one who thinks it's a capitulation. Listen to what Senator Russ Feingold from Wisconsin uh, said about it today. Quote, the proposed FISA deal is not a compromise, it's a capitulation. Not missing any words. The House and the Senate should not be taking up this bill, which effectively guarantees immunity for telecom companies alleged to have uh, participated in the president's illegal program and which fails to protect the privacy of law-abiding Americans at home. And he's saying this is not just about the Republicans, but he's saying about the Democrats who are going to go along with it. it and the only reason they won in 2006 and they're going to win in 2008 is because the Republicans are so loathsome that when they win and they face the sunlight of reality and, they, and people see them, the Republicans come out from underneath the curtain, they're so repulsed that they have to turn to these loser Democrats instead. And the only way the Democrats have won is by saying, uh, by lying down on the ground and letting the Republicans step on them and so that now the American people can see what the Republicans are actually about now that they're stepping on all these Democratic bodies. And they go, oh, oh, there's a Republican. Oh, God, that's hideous. Okay, I guess I can't vote for them. Let me vote for those doormats instead. The leadership and I guess the majority of the party, they don't care, man. You think they care about your principles? You think they care about the people who were tortured? You think they care about the people who died in Iraq? You think they care about the average man? They don't give a shit, man. They're lying to you. They just want more power. And if I get uh, these Republicans to commit political suicide by doing all these stupid things, then I'll get more power. Yeah, oh, people are going to die in the meanwhile. Nah, that's too fucking bad for them. Yeah, that's a sad day for them. Oh, they're going to break our laws and uh, violate the Constitution, and we might not be able to roll it back? Oh, who gives a shit? I'm going to win. I'm going to be the Democratic leader. I'm going to be the majority leader, and I'm going to have more Democrats in Congress. Here's the fundamental question. Are they ever going to change? Are they ever going to do the right thing? And we will likely get the answer after 2008. Because after all this, I'm still a naive fool who thinks, well, maybe if they have overwhelming majorities in the House and the Senate and they have a Democratic president and one who's actually smart and capable as Obama appears to be, maybe, maybe they can do some things that are right. But there's an excellent chance that they won't that they'll just keep on giving in to the Republicans because that's how they got here. They think, well, I mean, I got rewarded for giving in to Republicans, so I'm going to keep going in that direction. And I, but this I know for a fact. If, if Obama is not the president and McCain is, they, if they'll say, oh, no, we need filibuster proof. We need 60 senators. 58 won't do it. Oh, we were in the minority. Now in the majority. That's not going to do it. 58? Oh, no, we're in an overwhelming majority, but we don't have filibuster proof. Oh, no, we got filibuster. We got over 60 senators. It's still not, not enough. Now I need to override the veto of the president. I need two-thirds majority. Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me more power, and then maybe I'll do something that you want. How about you fucking fight now? How about you do something based on principle? Oh, but you don't have any principle. Look at Harry Reid's statements here. Watch this, okay? Uh, Senator Reid believes this version is better than the bill, We're talking about this telecom immunity, where they say, Bush, all the laws you've broken, don't worry about it, we're not going to do anything. Senator Reid believes this version is better than the bill uh, the Senate passed in February, which sucked balls, by the way, uh, and much better than the Protect America Act signed by the President last summer, but he remains opposed to retroactive immunity and re is reviewing the bill in its entirety. In other words, oh, no, 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 I'm being so open-minded, all of you people who actually care about these 
laws and these principles. Uh, uh, do, don't worry, I'm keeping an open mind. And you know what? And actually, I'm such a good guy. I'm actually against this retroactive immunity for breaking the laws. But I'm going to let the law pass anyway. Well, if you're against it, aren't you the Senate Majority Leader? Why don't you do something about it? Oh, no, you're not going to do anything about it because you're not really against it. You don't give a shit, right? You know what you could do if you were really, really against it? You don't even need to be the Senate Majority Leader. You don't need to have the majority. You don't need anything. Filibuster. How about that? Because the Republicans always tell me, and I had a Democratic congressman on the show today tell me, oh, we can't do anything. We can't do anything because the Republicans have 41 senators and they just filibuster. Well, how are they passing this bill? How are the Republicans and the Bush administration passing this bill? Don't you have 41 senators? You theoretically have 51 senators. Why don't you stop them? It's because you don't want to stop them. It's because you're lying politicians. Finally on that, it's not all of them. There are some who do the right things. We had one on the show today. Senator Feingold is another one. From time to time, Senator Dodd writes, uh, fights for the right things, and uh, you know, Congresswoman Woolsey, etc. There are good ones out there, but if you think your congressman is a good one, you're probably wrong. Ninety percent of them don't give a shit about anything but their own power, and their own ego, and their own drive, and you know, we this the media has this. Uh, to say undue deference is really underestimating and an underselling. Has a deference for uh, the politicians. Not, oh, oh, no, 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 you can't say anything bad about the politicians. What are you talking about? We've forgotten. The politicians are the worst kind of snake oil salesmen we, that there are. They're like the, the guys who puff themselves up and market themselves and sell themselves as you know some sort of savior. When all they care about is their own ego. You think it's just Bush and Cheney? It's all of them, man. Don't trust these politicians. Don't do it. Not all of them, but 90% of them. They're just in it for themselves. So, after today's over, likely uh, Bush will officially get away with all of his crimes. Congratulations, Democratic Party. Real uh, profiles and courage, real leadership there. You not only can't beat the worst and most unpopular president of all time and political party in the Republicans of all time, uh, but you keep giving in to them to this day, letting them have everything they want. If they're the worst and you keep losing to them, what does that make you? Doesn't it by definition make you the worst of the worst?